So, it's early in the morning. <clears throat> Just come down to show you the pond without air on has been overnight and as you can see the bottom drains are clear. Uh, there's a little bit of debris in the corner up there. I don't know if you can see. Just a small amount but as the fish starts moving around they tend to work its way either uh, up the skimmer line or down the drains and there's two bottom drains in this pond uh, per my design. Also one of the things I wanted to show you was behind here um, which are these up pipes there's three of them there's also another three six in the back beyond that wall which is in the filter house and they work as you can see to air off any gases but also you can see the white foam coming out there which is uh, to take the protein out of the water DOC it's called so uh, those returns uh, you could probably see there they return underground under the pond uh, roughly and you can see a tiny bubble coming out there uh, they return about eight inches under the top of the surface and uh, in turn they gas off but also they um, also help uh, take any uh, extra DOC out of the water from the food or from the fish waste itself and as you can see the feeder just went off there so there's a bit of food around but as the fish is early in the morning the fish will start grubbing around uh, later in the day and push any uh, fish waste on the floor uh, down the drain now when I built this pond one of the things we did was we bench the bottom that is the bottom the very center where the drains are at the deepest points shallowed off to the edges of the pond so it goes from 1.4 meters to the edge to roughly 1.5 meters in the middle so everything is sloping towards the bottom drain um, one of the things that I also made sure is that um, it sloped properly not gently but a little bit aggressively to the bottom of the pond with almost a channel where the drains are so when I was filling up the pond the first place that I noticed the water went to was straight to the drains it didn't sort of settle anywhere else um, which means in turn that when I get the flow of the pond working right, which it is now, it pushes any debris, fish waste, anything else um, down to the drain. So I don't really need uh, oxygen. I don't need the bottom drains running to provide oxygen. I've checked the O2 and it's fine. And then also I don't need to do anything to draw waste to the bottom drains. They tend to draw themselves down there. So if you're in a building of a pond stage, um, it's a good thing to bench the floor of the drains in such a way that um, uh, everything runs to them drains in that way. And you will always get some level of buildup on the floor the more you feed. And I see this myself also. I've got massive plecos and the plecos tend to, wherever they sleep, tend to gather up um, stuff, sort of gather around them. But as they start moving in the evening and the daytime, fish start grubbing around, uh, everything's generally moved itself down to the drains themselves so i'll walk around the other part it's early morning so i can't speak super loud so if you can't hear me turn up your volume on your stuff or shove a headphones on and you should be fine and uh so that's the drains there and there um you probably can see and uh, that's where i run oxygen if i need to it's a bit cooler today this early morning so there's no need to run anything else and my rationale for running O2 in the pond is only when it's on extremely muggy warm days um, less oxygen in the air then I need to get some in the pond but as you can tell my pond there's a lot of free space there free space there free space around there's 6,500 gallons you need to add the drum whatever in the pipe and showers and so I'm running um, slightly about stock and right um, Obviously, there's one or two fish in here that uh, would probably go move on itself um, in a few a couple of months uh, as their as Mike's customers collects them or he sells them on, um, which would leave the pond with three less fish in here as well. So that would be my um, stocking regime done. So just to show you, I'll get the lights on in here for all the new subscribers. Some of you have seen these lots of times. I'll get the light on. 
So just to show you what goes on in here now this is the feeder and it's up to that's about 300 grams my temperature is roughly 20.3 I will probably this morning move that up now to 20.5 and hold that there because we expecting some although it's a bit cooler today I'm expecting some milder weather this is the control panel and I can adjust the height of the pond control panel from here. Um, let me knock this air off. So less, one less bit of air. That hissing noise is because I let most of the air out into the atmosphere. The good thing about this drum, the man you clean it as you heard that I just did there. Also you can adjust the height of where it cleans to different points of the day in that way. but pretty much a drum does what it does really any any drum you have will work in any level and I think my advice for buying a drum is buy what um, you could get spare parts for um, don't just buy a drum because somebody has it um, I was one of the first in the country to own a drum and um, so back in the day when everybody thought drum was going to be the end of koi keeping because it's going to create a sterile environment and all those sort of thing. And like I said in my last video, Mike Snaden was the one who pioneered drums and backy showers. Um, and uh, I use it in that way. So this is my drum. And as you can see, um, I, I never, I'm not looking directly into that UV, by the way. It's just off to the side. So that's a drum. That's the heat coils there. Um, and these are the heat pipes that go from the boiler that's made which comes into the pond heats up the pond the thermostat is there um, that is the two meter double double width double length shower there in place there's about 380 to 400 kgs of backy house media in there there's the water plant there but filtrates all the water make sure the water is um, spot on coming into the pond because uh, our water is designed for drinking not for fish keeping so you know that one of the designs that I wanted to use was swept bends so as you can see I didn't go for a 90 it would have been easy to go from here to a 90 to drop down but I wanted swept bends into the pond to me it makes that little bit of difference less traction on the water and then also from the bottom as you can see here where the um, where the pipes come up ground underground there coming up to the top I also had swept bends and they are more expensive but I use swept bends coming up so that the water being pulled up from the bottom drain is not hitting a 90 it's actually been swept up and I think that makes a difference although I can't probably can't prove that but I think if you're in a building stage of a pond consider swept bends um, I tend to put this because um, this is short designed for somebody like me that's six foot five so if you're anywhere taller than six foot five you're gonna bang your head in that way um, that's from no coin no life if you know where that sticker is from comment in the comment section um, and it was given to me by the breeder himself okay so that's the drum that I have in there and that's a 5055 although this drum the actual screen is bigger it's probably like a 65 um, in, uh, in other drum mate it's probably a step up in that way but it's a drum it works it's um, one that I'm using and uh, it works pretty well so that's coming out of the fish house into the pond oh the sun's out that's nice been a bit cold colder today and you can see the amount of sun uh, these fish get so um, that air stone is off now that's just there for food to disperse the food it has nothing to do with the koi itself as far as bringing oxygen in it's literally just to push the food off from the wall I find that with my fish because they're so greedy um, whatever if the food is not pushed from the wall they come crashing into the wall and then they 
uh, split their fins and stuff like that. So when the sun's out, you might be able to see a bit better. The koi, they're all looking okay. Uh, not pristine, because they, they look better in cooler water, I think. Um, but as far as like parasites and stuff like that, I don't think they have anything. Um, I think they're fine. And um, and like I said, they it's early in the morning, so as they start grubbing around, <clears throat> any little bit of debris that is on the floor will move to the drains. But as you can see, this floor is pretty clean for uh, a pond that uses no um, air off the bottom drains. The bottom drains are connected, but I don't. I probably blast them every once a week, leave them on for an hour, just so that um, whatever water that comes up in that weak valve that lets up there, it sort of flushes itself in there. Um, but other than that, the, the koi seem to be fine. Um, my fish I tend to buy from Japan um, as uh, I travel myself. Most of these uh, from my Japan trip that just came in this year, the smaller ones. Bigger ones uh, tend to uh, all from Yumi Koi themselves. But um, generally, they're all either bought from Japan or bought from Yumi Koi in that way. So I do love uh, Kahaku, as you can tell. But I'm a Sankey person, but I have to find the right Sankey. I have a nice Sankey, but it's in Japan in the hands of Mike Snaden, um, which um, is being grown there with the aim of going in a Japanese koi show um, later on the year or when it can make it there. Um, he's going to grow it and put it there. I think it's Sansai now at 65, 67 centimeter. It's a Sakai fish, Sankey, and... Um, yeah, and uh, also I've got a fish at uh, Okawa, a kahaku that's now 84, 85 centimeters that's been shipped this year, May. Once this COVID-19 thing is, is uh, hopefully we're praying that it goes down, then um, fish can come, my fish could come back in. And uh, yeah, it, it's one of those things. We're all in the same predicament, so no one knows exactly what's happening. That is probably my oldest fish in the pond there. She's the remnants of the original pond. And she's getting better and better by as the day goes by. Every day I look at that fish, uh, it just looks better and better in every aspect. The skin looks better, the belly looks better. And it's a Matsue fish by uh, the parent is Haruka, I think, is that's how you say it. And uh, speaking to Mike about it, he said uh, that bloodline tends to look better with age. And they tend to keep a youthful look, which I can testify to that. The skin for a fish that's, I think, now seven year old six maybe six to seven year old i'll have to pull the certificate out it's actually looking really good for its age probably better than some of its younger fish as far as skin quality goes um that sankey there's a takigawa sankey that i bought last year um at the farm um it is male i bought it as a male um this the body type for a male looked one of those i could probably put on body and look like a female um the breeder says it's male um i'm not sh convinced yet the fins tell me it looks like a male too so it might be i mean these breeders this is what they do for a living so chances are it is a male and if you're buying any male fish it's dirt cheap so that fish they probably the box cost more than the fish to get it over here um but it was their best male out of their male ponds that was around and because i bought a few fish there i think they were kind to me that could have probably stayed and go to a show in japan but i wanted it for yonkoi show which has now been sadly cancelled so we'll see but it's bodying up really well for a male um if indeed it turns out to be a female that will be good um i'm not sure how the breeder would feel about it but i'm sure he'd be cool with that anyways um so and that's doing really really well um this is uh, Yumihimi, which is one of Mike Snaden's. Uh, he chose the parent, and uh, that's one of the offspring from there, one of his pets that uh, I was fortunate enough to acquire from him as well. This is a big Takigawa that is now, well, I, I haven't measured it this year, but last year the Koi Show, she measured in at 87 centimeters. She should have stayed at the Koi Show, but uh for some one reason or another it was i was asked to remove it it was a little bit of a sad moment because i took it all the way there to bring it back for no reason it just got stressed up in a bag and it needed a day in a pond but we live and we learn 
So it's here. We'll probably go to the show either later on this year or another year. The organ that everybody asks about is uh, Momentaro organ that I got. And um, that fish, last I measured that fish, which was last year, November, was 74, 75 at Sansai. So in the Sansai, uh, 74, 75. I haven't measured it now, but it's looking massive. So it wouldn't surprise me if it's up 76, 78. And it might be 80 centimeter yonsai in that way. So this is just a quick shot of the fish. The sun's out, so it's a good time to see them. I've knocked the air off the drains. Ah, you might be able to see the pleco grazing. There you go. There's one of the common pleco. If I can, you should be able to pick that up there. That's grazing, and they they're good at removing all the grub from the bottom. So that's it there. okay so it's a bit later in the afternoon now and you could see uh all the stuff is pretty much gone uh, whatever little remnants there was on the ground is gone i do have a lot of nice fine moss growing on the bottom i don't know if you can see that I'll try to zoom in um, but uh the fish likes grazing on that and uh, even if the koi don't get rid of it, the six plecos that are in here will um, slowly destroy that, take it down. Um, and uh, I don't have a problem with that growing there. That's not. I I'd rather leave it in there, let the fish deal with it. Uh, there you go. As we filming, seems like the feeder goes off again. So you can see how the fish comes to the food when the feeder is off. Um, it's the afternoon now, so they've had quite a few feeds. There's the rabbit now on a chair waiting for me to come and sit down. Um, so, as you can see, they sort of go for the um, sinking food first, and then, uh, but at the moment, there's a crew in there sort of gorging themselves on Kentaro Sakai food, the one I got from Koi Waterban. And on the top, there is a mixture of JPD Shogun and I think it's Takizumi, no not Takizumi, um, JPD Shogun and Saki Hikari, the R range, um, that's on there as well. So um, I've come over here just to get out the glare a bit, but I don't know if it makes a better shot. Um, I, maybe I can show you the moss that's growing here. So after maneuver myself around a rabbit as well there you go so you can see if i get the stone out you might be able to pick up the moss on the wall there and that's what you want is that sort of blanket of moss it's a healthy sort of ecosystem as if you will of it growing down there and uh, it's going all around the top and it will slowly let go as it gets longer um but the placos do like eating them and with my uh, with the plecos, they're sort of comfortable at 18 degrees, nothing lower. Well, I've gone lower before. I've gone down to 12 with them. But if you go, you have to go ultra slow. If you go quickly, you can lose them. So um, you have to take that temperature down ultra slow. Uh, but they're sort of happy around 18 with no problem. Um, 16 as well. You don't want to go ultra slow. But uh, it's not for everybody. The plecos are not here because it's something I look at. Actually, you hardly even see them. It day in here just to really do one job, which is to keep the pond walls clear and um, just sort of that added extra to ecosystem. Um, if you look at my uh, Japan videos when we were harvesting, I think was it a Matsue mud pond or uh, maybe a Omosaku mud pond? Um, there's lots of stuff from turtles to motorbike. Yeah, it was the Omosako. There was a Suzuki motorbike inside of there. There was barbed wire chain link fence inside of the mud pond. There was some oil cans with oil seeping out. But you got to remember the volume of the water um, tends to mean that, um, it, although it looks like a lot to us, it's, it's very minimal um, what gets into the water. And plus they've got a stream flowing in and a sort of like an overflow stream thing flowing out. So they don't really make that um, huge of an impact on the koi's health. 
Um, not that I would advocate, advocate that you put those things in your pond, just so I say that in case anybody thinks of dropping a Yamaha motorbike in their pond. Okay. Um, the, the, you can see the koi there on the wall, grazing, uh, picking up the moss off the wall because that's what they tend to do. And this pond is probably now coming to the mature stage. Uh, it's now next month to make it three years old. Um, it's, the pond's been running and, um, yeah, it, it, I could have easily packed down from the hobby and call it a day. Um, but because of uh, having some help from uh, the Greys, Stephen and Anthony, who came and looked after the koi for me, gave me the ability to, the pressure was off and to get the pond build as well. Unfortunately, I had to sell off most of my good koi to um, fund the bill. But such is life. Um, we're not all not all of us are made of money, um, so we got to do what we can to stay in the hobby, in that way. So, um, this in a nutshell is just a update on the pond system itself. Uh, I've talked through the koi and looking after. There's questions, sorry, that you guys have asked before. I've sort of covered that in a different talk, as it was. So. This is really just to, oh, the rabbit's under my foot now. Can't get by, see if I can get by there. Um, this is really just to sort of bring a conclusion on koi itself. And uh, if you're interested in a JPEG post, that's the koi there now. I bought that in Japan. And you can see that in a video in 2017. If you look at the Japan 2017 video, I bought that fish. And uh, one of the things that I did, uh, I had come to the end of my spend of how much money I had so I had a couple hundred thousand yen left and I said to the breeder at Matsuway look this is what I have all in uh, pick me uh, put a few koi in the bowl at that budget range because I don't want to waste your time um, so if you can tell me what this would buy me and he put four or five koi in you could see that on the look at one of the Japan videos and then in, in fact it was one of the first koi that he put in was that koi which is that one there um, I selected it was a big Nisai it was 60 61 at Nisai which was 2017 Nisai um, now in 2020 and I think it's about 81 last time I measured it was 79 and a bit so I imagine which was last year so I think it's around 81 uh, cm as well um, so a lot of the koi in here it's probably hard to tell but they are roughly around that sort of size this thing here um, is prob I think last time I measured it was 83, 82, 83 centimeters. Um, I don't net, net the koi often, as I've said before. Um, and also, I don't like just getting them out because there's one that flicked. Koi can flick for many different reasons. And I find also with the sun coming onto the pond, um, with photosynthesis in the pond as well, with the algae and all the stuff that happens, especially bright daylight, um, you could get a little bit of... Um, shift in the pH from daylight to to sun going down so the fish will flick because the pH would affect the acidity of the pond and uh, as the pH drop you will may get some fish flicking in the afternoon uh, if that's happening to you that's not a, that you don't have a parasite in my experience of when I did run arrow it was the pH shift with the sunlight on and off the pond um, so I tend not to really net the koi for that um, as I said earlier, I don't really net my koi often. Um, the nets remain dry most of the time of the year. Um, they just sort of enjoy their um, leisurely time to eat as they are doing right now. Um, this fish is one of my pet fish, unfortunately. Um, it's it damaged itself on the other side. You can't see it. Scales are growing back and heal over, but um, it's left a little bit of like a like a blemish on the scales skin. I could probably remove the scales, but I don't want to because I'll never show it unless it gets to like 100 centimeters. And then at that size, you're showing it for the length, not because of uh, being uh, scale perfect as it is. Um, so these these koi um, and, and like I said earlier, I tend to buy my fish in Japan. And if I. I'm hoping to go to Japan this year, but with this COVID-19 stuff, uh, no one knows what the future holds. Is uncertain times, really, is to coin the phrase. So, um, 
we've just got to wait and see what tomorrow holds. So for the time, whether I go to Japan or not, um, uh, this is what I have. But I tend to hold off buying any fish. Um, I like to go to Japan and pick my fish myself. And um, I'm fortunate enough that I do have the ability to do that. I know not everybody can. Um, and um, it's difficult as well because of obviously you got to fly, you got to pay your hotel, you got to pay your expenses there. But it's a good way to learn the hobby. And one of the things that Japan, going to Japan has taught me and talking to the breeders, it's given me a little bit more insight to the koi world. Um, I'd like to spend a like an August, July, August time in Japan uh, just to see the whole culling process and how they do that and probably help them out on the farms if it's possible that way. Um, it is a farm, so it is going to be work. Um, but I just want to experience that aspect of the hobby in itself. So I hope you enjoy these videos. Uh, we've now unlocked the live chat. So if you'd like to do a live chat, just let me know. Uh, we're able to do that. The more people who said they would like to do a live chat, then I could probably do that. I've got the time. Once work starts, I'm not going to have the time. Trust me. Um, we can do that as well. So I uh, hope that you're enjoying these videos and um, Coco, who's running around my leg. Um, and uh, you enjoy, as in my Yuji san. Yuji san, if you're watching this, there's your number one Asagi. It's going there, so. okay enjoy don't forget to like and subscribe also if you can share the videos that will be good as well um good for all of us in turn so that's all from me peace out